Right, those who saw my fixing video, they'll see this, they've seen this technique to a degree. Um, what I'm going to do is add some rosy red to the cheeks um, and then use the thinner to blend it out into and uh, out so that it's not, you know, just um, a Lucy Lockett style redness. Right, I want I want some sort of rosiness there. A lot of um, newborn babies, you see, don't actually have rosy cheeks at all. But I always give mine a little bit of a rosiness because I like to counteract the peop the fact that people say, "Oh, it looks lifeless," you know. I don't want the baby to look lifeless. I don't want people to think it remind them of anything that's not nice, you know. So, if we give them a teeny bit more life looking, a little bit of rosiness, then they're going to look very, very, very alive, aren't they? Aren't you, sweetheart? Yeah. Right, that's it for now, uh, for the cheeks. I don't want to overdo it. Um, I'm just going to put a teeny bit more colour on the lips for now, for this, this uh, layer. And then I'm going to leave her to cure. There we are. There we are. And the bottom lip. A bit on her, the bit that I can never think of the name of. I do this, I say I'm going to stop and then I carry on going and then I regret it. Somebody stop me, just stop me. Just 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 shout at the, the video because I need to stop now. Whoops, you see I've just gone and done that. I do this and then I regret it. I do carry on going until I do something that I think, oh no. Alright, stop me now. Okay, I'm stopping. Right, I'm going to leave her uh, to cure, <laughs> and then I'll come back and uh, do the next the next bit. Okay, I really am leaving her now. Okay, see you in a bit. Okay, hello again. Uh, my name's Caroline Doughty, and I'm doing the second part of this uh, this video, this DVD, this um, video showing how I uh, paint uh, this silicone baby. So, um, for those who haven't seen the first part of the video, um, I'm using Platzil gel as paint base. 
at the moment and I'm using uh, Sam pigments. Um, all the information on the uh, materials I'm using and the, the products and the technical data is on, on our website uh, which is www.makingsiliconbabies.com and it, there's also a shop on there where you can buy a lot of the products that we use here. Um, so if you live in the UK or Europe, um, we, we also ship to the rest of the world but you might want to find somewhere a bit closer to you that's selling the products if you, uh, if you live further afield. But we do ship out uh, to, to uh, worldwide, to most countries. Okay, um, so this is little Effie and I've done the underpainting on her. So we need to actually do the main, the main painting now. I've noticed somebody switched the lights off, so I'm just going to switch them back on again. Right. Okay, I've um, I've just given her a bit of a powder um, to so that I can handle her, but I it, she would normally be quite sticky. So I've done the front of her, I've done the back. She is in um, quite quite um, soft silicone, so as you can see she does squish up quite a bit. Um, normally wouldn't do that, wouldn't do that with, with sort of Ecoflex, but I do love the squishy silicone, so I do, I do, we do them in uh, our, our own blend of um, mallow silicone. So um, as you can see, she's, she's really, She's really squishy and lovely, but we need to do the, uh, the detail. Uh, on her back, I'm not going to do very much. Um, I think she looks fine as she is. I don't want to put too much detail on the back, so um, I'm just going to concentrate on the front today. Okay, I haven't done anything to her mouth or lips yet, so I think I'm going to start there. Uh, I'm going to mix up... Um, a colour that I think is is really nice for lips, um, which is which is um, I can't remember what it is now. I think it's um, hang on. I'll just check my notes. I think it's burnt umber and um, cool red. I can't find my notes, but never mind. I think it's burnt, I'm fairly sure it's um, burnt umber and cool red, which sounds like a weird combination, but it gives a really nice natural red colour. We'll try that anyway. Right, that's... This is a really great time to be running out of a colour, isn't it? Burn Tumber. And cool red. okay actually. It makes a kind of colour that, that to my mind resembles strawberry jam, that's what I call it. Um, that's better. Just a teeny bit more of the pink. You kind of know when it um, when it looks right. As I say, it it, it does resemble the colour of the kind of strawberry jam. There we are. 
maybe not strawberry jam, maybe it's a, a slightly gone off strawberry jam, I don't know. Right, um, what I'm going to do is I'll add a teeny bit of um, thinner, not a huge amount, <coughs> because I want this fairly, fairly um, substantial. <coughs> Apologies <coughs> for my cough. <coughs> I've had this cough all through this video and there's nothing I can do about it. using this colour quite a bit. I'm just going to apply it to the lips. A little bit of a, a thin coat. Sweetie, got little lips now. Right. Okay, what I'm going to do is I'm going to dilute this out and I'm going to flood the middle of the mouth. Um, first of all, I'm going to use it for the ears because it's really good colour. Well, I've got it mixed. Okay, I'm going to add some thinner and I'm going to flood the mouth with it um, and let it, let it cure in there. Because um, I've not sculpted the inside of the mouth, I've just cut it out to take a dummy. So basically I just want to flood it really. Um, I don't want people to be peering inside it looking at um, things. There's nothing to look at but um, this will give it a a fairly even colour inside and it will f it will form at the back of the uh, mouth. I've put a piece of um, a uh, cocktail stick in her mouth uh, to keep her lips open while I'm painting them. I'm just going to pour this in. Right now what I'm going to do is Move her mouth around so that that gets around, gets to on everything, every little part of her mouth, including the roof of her mouth. In a natural way. There we are. It's coated everything inside the mouth now, so I'm going to just leave that. To, to to dry at the to not to dry to to uh, cure at the back of her mouth, um, so that that's fine. I'm just going to put a little bit more on her lips. I'm just going to use this while it's while I've got a sort of a diluted version of it. Just a little bit of a, a covering on her pink cheeks, where her cheeks are going to be pink. If you look at photographs of babies' faces, you you can't be you can't really say where the the most redness is. Sometimes you see the red redness going up over the nose like that. Sometimes you see it light over the nose and the pink cheeks down here. You have to just go for it really, decide what, how you're going to do it and do it. it, it, it very often it, it depends on the angle of the camera as well, the lighting. Um, so there's no, there's, no, there's no definitive way of doing it as long as you decide on a way and, and do it and 
stick to that. Um, I'm just doing round the neck. Where we've done the underpainting, we've generally painted the um, flat areas, which means that the creases on the whole have got less paint on them than the actual flat areas. So we need to build up the creases because obviously the creases are going to be generally darker than the um, the flat, air, fleshy areas. So I've just I've just painted a layer of this over her cheeks, just to kind of start off the colour. Um, put a little bit over her eye there. and um, maybe a little across her brow. Right. a few other areas where we're going to be building up the colour a little bit. We don't want this to drip, if we can help it. Right, I'm just going to add some of this, this what's left over in the creases and um, give it a cut of a, a base coat of um, colour. I have done the creases but because I've done them very lightly as an underpainting they're very you can't really see them very well I'm not going to do a lot a lot with them except just define them So the, the, the part underneath the tummy here is um, is actually lighter than the rest of the skin, which is obviously not not realistic because normally you'd, you'd get a quite a, a sort of a heavy crease at the bottom here. So I'm just starting to build up the colour. Use the applicators this time not to put on colour but to start taking off where I want it to blend in. I very often do um, airbrushing at this stage rather than actually painting the colour on. I do like to use an airbrush. I'm not using it today because I, I obviously not everybody's got an airbrush, but I will do a video using an airbrush at some point just to show the, uh, the lovely effect you can get. I'm going to um, mix a little bit more colour into this. Um, it's got a bit more strength.
Need a bit more silicone. And the creases to a certain extent I'm letting it it form its own crease with the darker shade. Working into the wet the wet silicone there and letting it spread on its own. Um, It's not as easy as vinyl doing the creases because with vinyl the crease doesn't move whereas with silicon the, the crease can be like that or it can be like that so you have to make it so that it's going to look natural whether it's whether it's whatever position it's in which means that you, you to a certain extent you're not doing it as uh, you're doing it more subtly. Going to give the foot a little bit of a brighten up. Across the tops of those toes because this is the area where we're going to be doing we're going to be doing the little uh, white nail tips so it'll it needs a bit of color to be able to um, 
Most, most babies' toes have got little red ends anyway, and the same with their fingers. But it looks really pretty when you then uh, do the, the nail ends. Right, I'm not going to do much more colour on that than that. Right, I've got her, she's cured now, and I am actually really liking the uh, the, the colour of um, this slight blush over her face. So I'm going to make up some more of that colour, and I'm going to probably put it over most of the body, because I actually really, really like it. Um, yeah, I'm really, really happy with that. So I'm going to make up the same colour and do a kind of wash over the whole body. When, when, um, when they're matted at the end, they do tend to, just tend to dampen down the colour a little bit. So, oh dear, what have I done there? So, um, you can go a teeny bit brighter or darker than you would eventually like it to be, but don't go too, too far like that. Um, oh, it's alright, it's just pigment. <laughs> This is where you start. Oh, neat. I've got a little, a little mark there on her leg. I'm just going to um, sand it off. I think if I can find my sandpaper here, yeah, I see it. So I'm just going to sand that little bit off. That little mark. It's stuck tight. That's good. It means paint stuck. There we go, and it's off. This is this is um, the only way you can get paint off. To be quite honest, um, and it's the other reason why you shouldn't um, rub the surface um, because basically what you're doing is what I just did with the sandpaper, but in a very mild way. But over a length of time, say lots and lots of clothes changing, um, you know, changing the baby two, three times a day or something, and it's it's going to have an effect on the paint eventually. Although it is pretty resilient, but yeah, um, using the baby a lot, picking it up a lot, cuddling it. Um, I have customers who who take their baby to bed with them. Um, I wouldn't necessarily. Um, I don't think they actually take them in the bed with them, but it, it's it's going to have an effect on the paintwork, certainly on the matting anyway. Um, I, yeah, it is what it is really. Um, right, okay, get on with it, Mrs. Um, right, so we need some silicon. Yeah, as I probably explained in my previous, in the in the uh, first video, which was underpainting, I I like to um, I like to use Platzil gel for painting. A um, couple of reasons. One reason is that it cures a lot quicker than Psycho paint. And the other reason is that I use a very soft silicone. This is this is our own blend of very, very soft silicone. 
um, and Platzil gel is much softer than Psycho Paint. Um, I've got some sample pieces here. Let me just have a quick look. Um, this is this is Platzil. It's um, sure hardness hardness of zero zero thirty, so it's very very similar to the. Um, I mean, the, the, this is our mallow silicone that we poured in, so it, it's obviously harder than that, but it's quite soft. Um, Platzil is that one, and as you can see, it's it's just rubbery, really rubbery, which is great for sort of doing the, the final coat. It, it's not as hard as that when it's when it's diluted with um, with thinners and that. Um, it does go a bit softer, but on the whole, it's quite a thick skin. So if you're doing a few coats of Platzil, sorry, Psycho Paint on your baby, um, if it's quite a hard silicone like Ecoflex 30 or Ecoflex 20, uh, then you'd be fine with that. Um, but with me, I prefer to do most of the painting in the Platzil, which is a much softer silicone and does um, cure quicker. Uh, I do the final seal coat in Psycho Paint and I do the um, matting with Psycho Paint um, because I do like a sort of a, slip, a much tougher skin on the outside. Um, it's just it's just preference really. Some people wouldn't want it like that. Um, I'm just going to thin this down. And I'm going to use the same colour that I used before, which is um, hot red. This is the, these are the Sam colours. Hot red and burnt umber. I don't know how I, I found this combination, but it, it's it's a lovely combination for um, blushing. Let's see what that looks like. For a blush to the skin or um, cheeks, lips, anything like that. That looks about right actually. Okay, right, what I'm going to do is um, apply it with a fan brush. Now, I do have a fan brush that's smaller. Now, this one is shedding its bristles so I think I'm going to use the other one and I seem to be a bit low on fan brushes at the moment I've got some in the shop but um, I, I, I'm just going to use this for now it's quite a big one it's quite a big fan um, and I'm going to use it just lightly over the whole the whole body it'll just give it a kind of bloom I mean, a lot of the silicon painting, it's deciding there and then what you're going to do. As I said before, I do tend to overpaint. I, I, I don't always know when I should stop. And someone needs to say, stop now and take the baby away from me before I do any more damage. Um, I think we're all a bit, a bit like that. It's easy to say after you've gone too far. OK, that was that was a bridge too far. Um, easy to say, not easy to do necessarily. Um, I'm definitely not the best painter in the world. Um, there are a lot, 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 lot better than me out there. But um, I don't mind sharing what I do know um, with everybody. Right. I need to make sure I don't leave any, any drips. We don't want a drippy baby, do we? When I've done this side, I will turn him, turn her over, and uh, why did I say him then? And do the other side. I'm going bonkers. I'm sitting here with a baby with legs sprawled out in front of them, and I call her a him. I think I've probably painted so many Alfies as I'm used to doing boys. Um, And also for those who haven't seen my previous couple of videos, 
I apologise for my throat. I've got a, a weird bug. I've got a bug. I've had it for a week or so and it's not going away. It makes me uh, cough and I'm a bit croaky. So um, you will have to bear with me for that. If I get a coughing fit, I'll try and turn them, the video over off on, in time, but um, it doesn't always go like that, right? I'm just going to build up the colour a teeny bit on the bit, so I want more colour. Don't want a too pinky pinky. to um, just get a smaller brush and do some of the um, areas that I have to keep just layering like the ears <coughs> oh excuse me the ears and um, just across the eye there I don't want too much to build up inside of the eye Right, I'm going to let that cure. You see, I'm doing it again. Just tell me to stop. Somebody tell somebody tell me to stop. Right, I am stopping. Or, or, or is she? Is she stopping or not? Dear. Do you know what? I think I think I'm I'm getting really really happy with this uh, baby. I think I'm I, I think I'm going to um, leave it at that when I. When this is cured and and that, I I I need to um, I need to just mix some neat silicon for the um, the more concentrated areas, like the belly button, the little nipples, and um, her lips again, because I don't want it to run, but. Right. I 
I don't want them to show that very, very well, but it needs to just be there. There needs to be a suggestion. I don't generally do lips too dark these days. Um, I think they look really nice when they're just pale. Um, they, they differ so greatly in babies, but I don't. I think the worst mistake you can make on a baby is to make their lips look like they've got lipstick on. We've all done it, you know. Well, making assumptions here. I have, I've done it in the past, in my reborning years, and probably in my silicone as well. Adding colour. Right, actually, I'm really happy with that. So, I'm going to, um, I'm not going to do the hands too pinky. Again, I'm doing it. Tell me to stop. Tell me to stop. It's like I have to use up all the paint. I have got paint here, where shall I put it? Right. Right, I'm going to let that cure and then I'm going to turn her, turn her over and just do the wash on the back but I'm really, um, really happy with the way that's looking now. Okay, I'll be back in a bit. <laughs> 